Welcome back to the Technofile edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time for us to take a look at the headlines on some national dailies. All right, so we'll begin with the Punch newspaper. And the Punch newspaper this morning, leads with Nigeria won't break up, says Tinubu, meets US, UK, Saudi Arabia envoys. There are riders there. President says Nigeria will continue to exist. Promises not to be a dictator. Ipman opposes fuel subsidy removal. Kills resurface in Abuja, Lagos, others. And Biden writes, President Tinubu says, Nigeria's success is world success. There you have his picture, which was taken yesterday at the Eagle Square in Abuja when he took the oath of office to become Nigeria's 16th president. You have smaller headlines there. Songo Olu Abiodu sworn into second term Zamfara Governor Lament's empty treasury. You find details of that on the punch. Probe begins as rampaging youth set Lagos police station ablaze. Details of that is also on the punch newspaper. Above the masthead you have Tinubu Obaseki, others mourn as Dr. C dies at 71. That's High Chief Ali Ego uh, owner of AIT and Ray Park. There, very sad news that we heard yesterday about his passing. Well, that's the much I'll be taking from the Punch newspaper. Uh, may the soul of Dr. C rest in peace. The Amen. first independent um, media house in Nigeria when it was deregulated in the 80s. Or yes. in the 90s rather um, we also are moving now to the Guardian the Guardian newspaper uh, the top headline there is scarcity trail subsidy removal as Tinubu begins house cleaning that's on page six if you go down you will see Tinubu's house cleaning agenda and beautiful graphics there where things that he has said he was going to do were listed food security, unified exchange rate, one million jobs in digital economy, etc., etc. Uh, smaller headlines have it that are no opposition to blame as Tinubu Mount Saddle gets Biden's support. That's also on page six. So Lu kicks off second term optimistic of a better Lagos, page five. Dr. C, I have lost a friend, brother, says Atiku, that's on page three. Um, Aerofire accuses Buhari of mishandling terrorism as Sani vows to secure Kaduna. That's on page four. Mm, interesting. And controversy over Kali Air assets, 900 million naira debt to aero contractors. That's coming from Cross River State. Uh, business page 21. Uh, those are the headlines we'll take from The Guardian today. From The Guardian, we'll move to the Nation newspaper. The major headline on the nation newspaper, My Plans by Tinubu, with the writer, experts back president on subsidy, exchange rate policies. You have his picture there. I must tell you yesterday, looking at him, I saw a man fulfilled. Mm. And this picture captures that. Mm. He didn't look confused. He didn't look un uh, unprepared. He, he, a dream come true. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been a governor senator and now president how many people can boast of this in their lifetime above the masthead you have that story about raymond dokwasi high chief raymond dokwasi torrents of tributes for media mogul dokwasi airports named after buhari awolowo idiagbo others ipman seeks probe of 60 million Liters daily petrol consumption claim and governors unfold agenda in 28 states. And right down, you have highlights of inauguration address from yesterday's uh, process uh, in Abuja. And well, that's the much I'll be taking from the nation. Okay, from the nation, we move to the leadership. Uh, leadership leads with Tinubu hits ground running list critical reforms and the writers are to focus on economy power agriculture security and there's so many others that you might want to read on uh read up on that is on page four um 
We have Buhari family return to rousing welcome in Daura. Then below there, below the picture of uh, the president, you have subsidy removal. Nigerians may pay 700 naira per liter for petrol from July. That's the story there on leadership that you can read on page 23, I think. National airports named after Wallowo, Okadibo, Danfodio, others. You can read that on page 7. And that's all we, could, we will take from uh, uh, those, from the newspapers actually. That's the final newspaper that we're going to take. And we're glad that we are being joined by uh, our analyst for today, Chris Kainde Wandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. Good morning, Chris, and welcome to Day After Inauguration. Thank you, good morning. Mm. Thanks for having me. Uh, you were not at Eagle Square yesterday, I presume, but I'm very sure you, you, you watched what was going on and you had your takeaways, as it were. Yes, uh, I wasn't at uh, Eagle Square, but I was at the Akwai Bomb Stadium in Uyo, uh, where I watched the, uh, the Swahilian ceremony of the Akwai Bomb State, New Akwai Bomb State Governor, uh, uh, Umo Eno. Uh, it was colorful, it's as colorful as it is what you saw at uh, Eagle Square. Uh, maybe because some of us know that Eagle Square were crowded and that uh, were crowded. So, we decided, <laughs> we decided to um, leave Abuja for now um, and go to where it's a bit more quiet. Um, but um, yesterday, expectedly, everything came out well in Abuja. And um, the ceremony came out seamlessly. And uh, we have it this morning. And uh, we have a new president, a brand new president, as we used to say in local parts, uh, Pan. You know, Pan, Pan, Bojo, in those days, when you say Pan, it's brand new. It's a brand new uh, president who seems to want to hit the ground running uh, with um, policy statements, uh, which he has already uh, given out. And uh, we hope that he will be able to live up to expectation. And um, most of the promises he made, we don't want to see the promises that we had in 2015. And people uh, were asking the the problem we had, and the issue we had with that. Yes, promises were made to us, but we didn't ask them what kind of promises. Uh, so they gave us hope. We didn't know as them the level of hope that's what we to get. And at the end of it, all, we end up short side of the stick, as it were, um, as President Muhammad Bukhari made exit, uh, his exit yesterday after eight years in Sadhu. So uh, the president elect came out yesterday, blazing, uh, with an um, announcement. First um, announcement was that uh, the total subsidy was gone. And the way he put it, I read it. So he said that there was no provision for for petrol subsidy from June. So he wasn't, the, he's not the one that removed this uh, petrol subsidy. It was more, contrary to what people have been reporting, the petrol subsidy was removed by the RPD government of President Muhammad Buhari, who stopped the payment of subsidy at the end of May uh, or till June now. So, um, and you've seen that the queues have been returned, and um, that is what we're going to face in the next few weeks. And then we're just waiting to see how. The new president will be able to tackle that. Okay. Uh, everybody's saying he has hit the ground running, and one of the things that he has done to show that he's very proactive is that he has appointed three people, key uh, members of uh, his uh, kitchen cabinet, as Maureen would put it, <laughs> uh, uh, including uh, Dele Alake and uh, two others. Um, you have seen the names. You have seen what they have been in the past uh, to the president and to uh, the people that they uh, did that job for, uh, like, you know, if they were in Lagos, how they impacted the lives of the Lagos people and all that. So I uh, would like your comment on the first three appointments of the president. Well, I'm a journalist and also a uh, I'm not going to run with that list as of this morning because there has not been any official statement to that effect. So, whatever you've been reading has not been mere of speculations. And I read somewhere this morning where um, the supposedly uh, spokesperson of uh, Ola Metunu, Bela Lake, said that it was fake news that uh, no appointments have been made. But there's no smoke without fire. So, we might just end up having this news released today. But officially, the 
have not been any official statement to that because there's supposed to be an official statement and somebody had to sign on, on that statement. That is how it works. So, um, but if these are the names being put forward, the only person I know in that list is uh, Bill Alake, who was a commissioner for information. Um, and he was practically the spokesperson of the APC presidential campaign, although we also have prior effects. Bill Alake was more uh, apt in his handling of that um, of that office during the campaign. So the president, the president, the president is going to pick him as a uh, as the spokesperson of his uh, government. Well, all well and good, that would be a rascal in a run pool or slow as it were. But we just have to wait for official announcement. But definitely, um, key appointment will be, will be made definitely by today. I'm sure. The first, you know, when the government comes, the first thing they, they have performed their uh, names, um, positions have to be taken immediately. One is the media, so the spokesperson of the government, two is the chief of staff, um, to the president or the governor, as it were. Three is going to be chief of protocol, and uh, as these three are sacrosanct when it comes to appointment, and they are the first three line of um, defense for every government. So we expect that. Officially, we don't want to well, uh, let's be officially, it should be officially made. And once it's officially made, the person that is going to sign off on that first statement is the chief spokesperson of the president. So let us wait and see what happens. Although there have been some, even some of the uh, <laughs> national newspapers that publish that story, if you go to the website, they have removed it. I just checked one this morning as of those companies, and I know that they will really remove that. So let's wait and see. Uh, but I'm not denying that. The story is true, but what I'm saying is that there is no official confirmation to that. Okay, so um, still on the Punch newspaper, um, you have Tinubu Obaseki, others mourn as Dr. C dies at 71. Oh, yes, it's quite unfortunate um, um, that um, Dr. Raymond Dr. C, the man that pioneered West Private Radio Station in Nigeria, as uh, is late. Um, is a very, very big loss to the industry. And um, and to him, the industry is out of the industry, the industry. The first of all, most people don't know that the human workers is not a demand. It's a demand. It's a demand. It's a demand. It's a maritime. Yeah, maritime. Like, you know, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it's a maritime. But he has so much passion and so much love. And in pioneer than that, I will saw what he went through as the pioneer. Um, private, uh, private um, radio station owner in the 90s, how the military regime it practically fought the military regime to a standstill. In the several times, uh, the military regime shut down that radio station, and um, from there it moved to uh, uh, television too with AIT. So when the news came in yesterday, it was just a rumor. Uh, it was going on around until I called the top management staff of. Um, uh, that communication um, to confirm to the one that it was. And um, the executive director, Chad, one of the executive directors, confirmed me to me that uh, we should wait uh, that uh, a, a formal announcement first I And mean, within five minutes, that statement came in. That was when we went on. Right? But it's just unfortunate. Uh, from the news that we get in which it was, they say he died while exercising uh, uh, at his treadmill. And then when he was rushed to the hospital, died. So, although he has been, been, he has been under the weather for some time, for some weeks, um, but the death yesterday was so, uh, so sudden. And um, my heart goes out to the family and also to the dark communication family. So, rest in peace. His impact in the broadcast sector mm. is greatly missed, yeah. uh, uh, always respected, a great man that he was. Okay, uh, well, yesterday uh, was the swearing in of the uh, president, and he outlined a lot of things as his plans for uh, Nigeria. Uh, one of the things uh, we, we were talking about was the fact that, okay, you have already said something about the fact that the outgone administration removed fuel subsidy, so uh, it is not his making. I, I don't know if you were justifying the fact that he has accepted hook, line, and sinker, what the previous administration did, whether it is going to be uh, bad for Nigeria or, or good for Nigeria. Uh, he didn't have a say in it. 
um, if you're comfortable with that. Other things that he also mentioned is that uh, he hopes to grow the economy of Nigeria and, uh, such that the GDP will be up to 6%. That is a tall order, but it's realizable. And um, he also said there will be food security, unified exchange rate, uh, one million jobs in digital economy, and so many promises that he made. Nigerians have been asking the questions, what is the marked difference from the promises that we started hearing from 2015, which he himself also uh, was promising alongside the president, the, the Afghan president and all other APC. So why, how is it, how confident are you that he can fulfill these promises when his, his party's administration could not fulfill the ones they gave us from 2015? What, what yes. amount of confidence yes, do you have? Yes, you know, they came in 2015, and I said, we didn't ask them which kind of change um, they are advocating, whether positive or negative change. That was a mistake we made. And uh, when they made the change in 2019, they said it was hope. And uh, we are so hopeful, and uh, all of it all gets so hopeless. And he came out and said his hope is really hope. I do not know why he did drop down. He says so is really hope. And uh, we, we, we are looking forward to it. Um, so the Prime Minister has made in 2015, uh, we heard um, the government saying that they were going to get 10,000 mega, uh, 10, uh, megawatts into the, uh, uh, into the national grid every year, and they will grow to about 80,000 megawatts by the time they are leaving. Today, it will have about, well, just probably between 4,000 megawatts, this is what it is. They say they are going to create jobs, about 3 million jobs a year. Uh, we, have, uh, we, we have one of the highest uh, on the global interest in the world, and we are diving to um, the local the local Nigerians uh, 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 under poverty. Under poverty, just recently about 133 million thereabout. So I said he was going to uh, build refineries and going to turn around the four that we have today. We cannot we are not refining the same one liter of fuel in many of the four refineries for a Kaduna and the three in Port Harcourt. We are still dependent in, in, in Portland. So, um, these are the, some of the key areas that obviously that are made. So, I am very, very skeptical. So, when this family, these politicians come with their promises and go, as they say, I am very skeptical because nowadays they promise and they fail. And um, let us still hope. He said he's going to inject one million jobs. I don't know where he's going to get that from. How is going to do that? But let's see what he can do. Don't forget that this. Uh, uh, this is somebody that has been getting ready for this job. I think he's he may be a bit more prepared for the job than what Muhammad Buhari was particularly forced to perform the president in 2015. After about three four attempts, um, uh, Mama, in her interest, said that uh, Tinubu was a senator, he was a governor, and now he's the president. He said they will not come. So we think Hawaii. That's what you can do. Um, but uh, I, I take most of these promises to be just out. I would rather believe that. Personally, if I have my way, there are two things, two key areas, or three key areas I think we should focus on. Number one is power. If you can get power right, then the economy starts reviving itself. Two is employment. If you can get employment right, then we also uh, will be able to. And then the economy, the economy encompasses so many things. There are so many things involved. If we're going to drive the economy, then um, that the job will be created and there will be creation. So, yes, I think I have a certain time with Amon Bakat. Each successful government since 1999, 1960, or whatever, we get the one key area. All right, um, there's a bit of um, glitch there, yes, which question is going to fix. Yes. Okay. Um, if they have the one key area, and successively, if let's say one uh, took the uh, power, another one take on um, this thing, then by now, we should have been home and dry in our uh, in this thing beds. Those are the issues as it were. And um, we don't seem to. Um, are you hearing me? Yes, yeah. we are, clearly. Yes. So if they are taking it uh, on the strike and taking it, if not like, look at what happened when they um, uh, um, what's his name? When um, Obasanjo um, was in office, he, he was able to handle the area of telecommunication. And today, that's what we have in Google, we are seeing in the telecom sector. So, um, power to me is key. If this government can be able to handle
and the issue of power effectively then i'm sure that uh, uh, the economy will appear of best i'm still skeptical with some of the uh, uh, rhetorics and promises just let's wait and see how it goes yeah, I guess that's the position where we are at the moment. Let's wait and see. Let's move over to another um, headline there, which is Songo Lua Biondu sworn into in for second term. Zamfara governor laments empty treasury. You were in Akwaibom State. Um, tell us, how, how was it? Is, did he inherit an empty treasury too? Did the Akwaibom State governor inherit... An empty treasury. Yes. Okay. Let me the headline. Perhaps, perhaps you didn't hear the headline I read out. Samuel Lu Abiodu sworn in for second term. Then Zamfara governor laments empty treasury. So I'm asking. I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. So I'm. I'm. I'm wondering. I'm wondering since you were in Akwaibom to witness is wearing in whether he also um, inherited if you know no, 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 no. That one, i'll tell you that uh, lots of um, whatever way it be Abuja seems to be the, one of the most progressive states in nigeria i, I was shocked by what i saw him my brother he knew very well yeah. <laughs> he's closer to this point yes. he's, he's, he knows um is it he's, he's much much uh, i was shocked the agri government has been very good basic infrastructure I met, I saw here when I came, uh, the roads have been very, very good. Uh, and so many infrastructure that um, the government of Emmanuel uh, uh, um was able to equate the people of um, Aguaybon State. And they've just taken a uh, Aguaybon has been very lucky, I since 1999. And uh, you, you also saw how Boswina um, Pabu uh, did a wonderful job uh, for the within the four, eight years that he was in the government. So, um, the incoming governor of Wabba State is, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's lucky, it's one of the lucky ones because um, a good foundation has been led to him. I was in some of the, uh, I was, after the uh, the ceremony at the stadium, I moved, uh, we moved to the, um, um, to the center of, central party uh, for the former governor in his, uh, in his uh, local government I was there. There was also a banquet uh, yesterday uh, in New York. And he read out a lot of things which have been confirmed by the new governor. And I think that quite one is a good hand. But to Zamfara, that Zamfara is a different government. I don't forget that the Zamfara state government is running, having a running battle with the chairman of EFCC. Mm -hmm. And the chairman of EFCC said that, um, said that um, an alleged 70 billion naira fraud has been uh, an alleged. Uh, uh, 70 billion naira that has been committed by the former government, and um, and that has been the reason why um, there has been this issue between him and the chairman. And he was the government demand to say that the the EFC's chairman demanded two million dollars uh, from him. That is still being investigated. So, but it's quite unfortunate. So many of the governors, incoming governors, are going to have to. And your government has as as example started in Nigeria. Now, is the top profile of Nigeria. The their profile that President Muhammad Buhari left for this government, I wonder how they would say true with it. Um, I, I'm not giving uh, President Bola uh, Tamir to you with the kind of debt profile that we have currently. That has risen to some say it's about 90 trillion, some say it's about 80, and whatever, some say so far. If you see how much we are using to service our debt we can it there on a monthly basis, it is so, so difficult. So, um, just as it's in the federal, it's in some state. But uh, nobody get them for the job. The governors are the one that said they want to take up this job. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure as we, uh, in, in whatever you can do, you take both in ability the assets. So, mm -hmm. you take up in ability the, the assets. That will be an excuse for them not to perform. They don't, they don't get the ground running. And look at areas where they can be able to make uh, some level of fortune uh, internally uh, for the uh, governance of their people. Let them not depend on Abuja every month. Hmm. Once they want to depend on Abuja every month, those hand out, they are going to run into problems. Indeed, we wait to see the caliber of leaders we're going to have this time around. You know, last time you were here, you talked about all the possibilities that there are in some of these states to generate funds internally. And so let's wait and see what they can do. Uh, and as Bola Tinubu, the president, has said, 
he took this responsibility upon himself. Nigerians should not pity him. He knew what he was getting into. Mm. They know what they're getting into. Let's see what they will do with it. Yeah, well, um, we are resisting the urge to uh, keep asking you questions. There are very many headlines that we could have talked about, but we are out of time, unfortunately. So we'd like to just thank you for being a part of our show. Uh, keep eating all the chicken and forgetting <laughs> about us. <laughs> Anyway, Chris, it was so good having you. It's always good having you on the show, and we wish you a safe journey home when you're ready to return. Thank you very much. Okay, that was uh, Chris uh, Wandu, a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. He was talking to us from Uyo. I will take a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at something else. We'll be looking at the economic future of Nigeria under a new presidency. Stay with us. <laughs>